Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, big thank you to all those who have recently subscribed. All your support has been greatly appreciated. Also big thanks to everybody who recently on Facebook voted on which of the channel arts they wanted posted up on the channel. Um, that has now been finalised, the final draft has been posted on Facebook and all your feedback and comments were greatly, greatly received and appreciated. Um, just to help this channel evolve and become something quite, you know, quite fun for everybody just to, to watch and enjoy. So a big thank you to everybody who's supported with that. So here we are on episode two. So welcome back. Um, what we're going to be discussing today is probably the biggest project that I had over 2020. Uh, the biggest, um, probably like, you know, most um, kind of... What's the, what's the good word for it? I think it's the one I'm most certainly most excited about. That's really, you know, got me got me going. Um, so this is Nest of Vampires, if you couldn't tell, obviously, by the title of the video. Um, so yes, we're discussing Nest of Vampires today. Um, so where to begin on that? So, I'm going to briefly read you out what the synopsis is of Nest of Vampires. So this is directed by... Chris Sanders of Black Coppice Films, who has made um, a number of other short films, and this is the first big feature film that he's produced, uh, directed in, and also acted in as well. Uh, multi, multi talented guy. I mean, uh, not get to, not get many people like that who've got so many, uh, so many talents in their repertoire. Uh, so, Nest of Vampires follows MI5 agent named Kit Valentine, played by Tom Fairfoot, who is a quite a big uh, actor in the independent scene who has recently been in quite big feature film projects and has also been in The Crown as well, he's appeared on The Crown. So um, obviously a guy who is very talented and you know has a great deal of um, success in his, uh, in his profession. Um, uh, he goes from London to rural England, specifically into Leicestershire where the film is based in Hinkley where we shot it. Um, he's pursuing the people who have murdered his wife and kidnapped his only daughter. During his investigation, he uncovers a dangerous secret society who are deeply embroiled in human trafficking, as well as satanic cult worship. This is a uh, fantasy, horror, uh, crime thriller. So there's a lot of interesting elements into this film which I'm really quite excited about. And um, it should hopefully be released March the 1st, I think was the confirmed date. So it is to be out soon. Um, they went through a lot of production throughout all of early 2020. And the final scenes were shot toward the end of the year. Um, when obviously we were able to, given the um, multiple lockdowns that we had throughout 2020, when we had chance we finished off the final scenes, of which I thankfully was part of one. And it was great to work with Chris and the team behind Black Coppice Films on a really quite ambitious project that I think is really going to make big headway in, in terms of the independent scene and also like really set the stage for also other big projects that he's got planned and other big films to come from the Midlands so yeah I'm really excited about what this project has to offer and where it could possibly go and what it will achieve. Um, so a little bit more about how I got involved with Nesta Vampires. So originally, um, I'm trying to remember now actually, you see memory of actors is not as great as it, as it appears and his reputation would proceed. Why is Billy Dreffel? Um, so I originally got involved with Nest of Vampires through simply seeing um, the Nest of Vampires page, actually. Just coming across it one day on, on social media, on Facebook, and noticed they had recently put out a casting for, I think it was a female actress, and I remember just messaging the page and just asking, you know, do you have current other castings on at the moment? Are there any projects that 
you have lined up, you know, just asking what was available, you know, you don't ask, you don't get, or you don't uh, get any relevant information. And Chris got back to me and said, actually, there is a, you know, we are finishing off a couple of final scenes, you know, could I see some material that you've done? Obviously, sent my, uh, sent my showreel, headshot, and other information to show him who I was, what I do. And, um, yeah, got offered a small role in the film. Unfortunately, at that time, when they was originally meant to be shot, um, I was meant to be returning to work. And the work dates, unfortunately, got in the way of that day's filming, so I had to regrettably drop out of that scene, um, in which I informed Chris about. And thankfully, it was, re it was recast, and the scene went off really well and actually if you do watch the trailer it's um it is that scene is incorporated into the trailer uh, the character being played by tom hendrick who i'm sure does a really really good job and uh looks really looks like he really excels a good performance in the trailer from what i've seen so i'll be interested to watch that scene back with him in it um so later down the line he chris then got back in contact with me not long after onto which he was doing a short film and asked me to be the the male lead, which I was deeply honoured about and snatched the, took the opportunity straight away in The Haunted Couple, which is a short film which I will do a separate episode about, um, as I have worked with Chris on another two films, being The Haunted Couple and Blood Prison, another one of the short films in which he is hoping to compile these short films into a feature-length anthology. I'm sure if you go and check out the Black Coppice channel, as well as his social medias on Instagram and Facebook, he can tell you more information about those upcoming plans. I'll leave links in description below. Um, so obviously worked on The Haunted Couple, and not long after, Chris then, um, I then saw on Monday he posted about another scene he was doing, another final scene for Nesta Vampires that he wanted to complete. And I just messaged him saying, are you alright if I apply for that casting through on Monday? I'll go through the proper channels, proper process. Um, did that. You know, sent all the relevant information again, just to make sure it was a proper formality and professional. And then he let me know and said, yeah, of course, you're more than welcome to take on this small role. Um, are you available for the dates? Yeah, no problem. So we filmed on... Was it now? It would have been... 26th of September, again, I'm having to look at notes because my memory is that dreadful. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, actors' memories are always what they appear. So, yeah, filming on the 26th of September, I uh, shot at, shot in Hinckley, again in Leicestershire. It's a really nice little venue. Um, small casting crew, obviously, com conforming with the regulations given to us at the time. To make sure everybody was safe. Um, yeah, it was a really, really good day on set actually. I worked with some absolutely wonderful people, again, that I'd already previously worked on with Haunted Couple, met a lot of the same people and a couple of different other ones that joined the shoot on Mr. Vampires. Um, so, such people I did work with in terms of actors were John Paul Gates, a um, really talented individual, a true experienced professional in the industry um, you can find the link to his channel and the video that he did on behind the scenes of Nesta Vampires on that specific day we filmed um, I will leave a link to that as well as well as there's also a brief um, cut down version of that video that I edited here on this channel as well so you can check that out as well if you wish uh, but the link to the original full video from John the film actor is which his channel is will be listed below um, I also met Emily Leroy, who was my uh, my female co-star on the day. A wonderful actress, extremely talented, um, such a diverse and versatile actress with such a great amount of potential and a great amount of talent. She was absolutely wonderful to work with. You know, couldn't have asked for a better partner to work with alongside her and John. It just made the scene really flow so well because we'd worked previously obviously with John on the Haunted Couple then Emily just jumped right into the scene and you know did her stuff, sold it so well. 
so uh, that was that was great. Um, other people, obviously, that worked on the film, uh, sad I didn't have scenes with, but who I'd also worked with on the Haunted Couple was Lucy Marshall and Peter Mahoney, who was one of the producers as well as a coordinator on the Haunted Couple for various stunt work and fighting choreography. Um, so yeah, they were. It was great to see that they were involved as well, as well as Pete Gibson, who was worked on Blood Prison, as well as worked on Nest of Vampires. So, what's really nice about working with Chris and Black Coppers Films is the again this community feel that a lot of the same actors are used. Um, you know, is that reliable core group of people that are constantly working on these films and you know making such a strong community feel from it, which I think is brilliant. And I think that's something that Chris really idolizes and really um sells forward when he when he makes his film so great great thing to have really in in the days in today's sort of industry so um big credit to chris on that and creating that atmosphere um so yeah um that was basically the experience i had working on nest of vampires um and i think what's so good about what's so good about this film is the amount of detail, the amount of layers it has in terms of how brilliant the cinematography is, the score's wonderful, how beautifully it's shot. Uh, not only have you got so many talented cast and crew, but everybody's so professional, friendly, and again, just the array of talent that's on show in this film, both behind the camera and in front, is absolutely phenomenal. The amount of work, um, that Chris has put into obviously marketing the films, making sure it's sold to distributors. You know, he, the amount of um, it astounds me the the level of commitment, dedication, and just drive that Chris has as a, a producer and director. Um, he is absolutely phenomenal and a great person to work with. So if you ever have the opportunity to work with Chris and the team at Black Coppers Films, as well as the individuals. Uh, both cast and crew that worked on these films. I couldn't recommend it enough to be honest. So that for me was my big highlight of 2020 was working on these films with this great team. Um, yes, so we hope to see the film uh, released um, on March 1st. Um, but obviously more details will probably come out of Black Copper's films and from Chris um, when near the time as well as uh, any other material that's being worked on, as well as his next feature, which he's already in the process of write, still writing or completing, as well as obviously the other productions that we've completed that have yet to be released. So um, that, I think, for now is a wrap on this episode. Uh, if there's any other things you'd like to know, uh, by all means, just leave any comments. I will leave descriptions and links to um, the channels and the material for Nest of Vampires, uh, if it's the IMDb page, uh, the Black Coppers Films channel, as well as Chris's Instagram, John Paul Gates' his channel as well. You can check all that out to really research upon Nest of Vampires before it's released in March. I highly suggest that you do, but again, being biased because I'm really excited about it. So yeah, that's a wrap on today. And like always, everybody, I will see you all in the sequel. Bye-bye.